Welcome to Born Without Boundaries, Aries Full Moon Musings for all signs. And I'm going to break it up by signs. I'm going to break it up down in the description box, guys. So be sure that you look in the description box. Um, there will not be a link to Vimeo this time around, though there is a link to all the extendants on Vimeo that you might want to get some insight into to compare your weekly predictions to this moon sign reading. I'm sorry, this full moon reading. But um, no, this is pretty good. Like, like hanker down and there will be a few commercial breaks here and there. I'll warn you when they come up because um, this will be a long reading. It'll be all, all 12 zodiac signs straight through to see how the Aries moon intuitively. I'm not looking at a chart. Like I said, I'm not an astrologer. I'm a tarot card, oracle card reader. Um, I'm just studying astrology. So I would not... Um, I would not I would not try to delve into that aspect of it um but this is an intuitive reading to see the energies by sign how the Aries full moon is going to affect you I was inspired to do this reading because it, it I I are I'm a Cancerian I'm a quadruple Cancerian and I already felt the pull of the Aries full moon on me I already felt the effects now this is a very special full moon all full moons have their own uniqueness to it but this full moon is uh happening on october 13th um eastern standard time it's happening um earlier evening this is what i want to say about it it's called a hunter moon and the hunter moon in native american culture is the first moon full moon that follows a harvest moon and the harvest moon is the full moon that arrives closest to the fall or autumnal equinox okay and so that actually happened last month in september this month we have the we have aries okay we have the aries full moon happening it's the hunter uh, on october 13th this is the hunter moon because it's it's following the harvest moon the hunter moon in native american culture came after the harvest moon and the reason why it was because hunters had such an easier time after all the grain had been chopped hunters had an easier time finding and seeing the animals or seeing the animals come out they couldn't hide in the higher grass or the fields because everything had been chopped down and harvested it was easier to hunt it was also easier to hunt those animals that hunted other animals like deer etc etc animals like like whatever bears foxes coyotes wolves anything so in other words after the harvest it kind of made it easier to find the animals and so the hunter moon is a celebration of this this time of year where you know um, hunters would strap on their gear and get out there to make sure that they had meat etc etc that they would dry or salt to preserve through a long winter when it's harder to find animals. A lot of animals stay insulated, go into hibernation or become less active. So this was about, this was, this hunter moon was about harvesting flesh. Now, if that isn't a little bit intense, I don't know what is. Oh yes, I do know what is having this hunter full moon be in the sign of Aries, which is ruled by Mars. That does not shit around when it comes to battling for blood. So the intensity, there's, this moon could also be called the blood moon. That's another name for it because of the hunting season. So this um, aspect of blood, this pulsation, this intensity, this life that is full and brimming and about to explode as well as be harvested so that you can sustain yourself in long months there's a lot of tales that are there's a lot of there's a lot of inferences in there that i want you to i, I invite you to in uh, apply to your own life in uh, where your life is now what I can say is this energy is going to be wrought with intensity, not impulsivity, but almost like eyes dilated. 
eyes dilated and focused, ready to hunt even in the dark, ready to leap, ready to spear, ready to kill in order to live. Death for life. It's a perfect segue into what will become Scorpio season. Um, a beautiful segue into the, the new moon in Scorpio that will happen on the 28th of October. Um, as we go closer and draw closer to like the longer nights, the colder weather, of course, not if you're living around the equator, but <laughs> generally speaking, um, uh, where I am, definitely, we're getting ready for the winter season where we're trying to prepare for the times when there's just that, that, that kind of subverted message of prepare for the hard times so they won't be so hard. You know, in other words, if you know what's coming and you prepare for what's coming, then what's coming isn't fearsome, isn't hurtful, isn't painful, and isn't difficult because you've prepped for it. And these are the kind of things that we know that winter is coming. Winter is coming. And so is the need to prepare for its coming and make sure you have all that you need. In other words, don't hesitate to take what you need. And I think that the intensity of this full moon on October 13th is going to be wrought with the intensity of people being willing to passionately, fervently, aggressively take what they need. But also because this is blood, this is about sincerity, this is about truth. Um, I don't think that you're going to be able to just take what you want. I think there is going to be an intense scrutiny around what you decide to engage in or pursue around this time. I do, especially with Saturn direct, Saturn going direct, Pluto going direct, and Pluto could be an even more vicious judge than, um, than Saturn because Pluto is not of this world. Pluto is of the underworld. Pluto is of life and death and larger, um, larger, um, larger topics, broader topics that don't just span the 3D world. So a lot of times the, the decisions that Pluto makes karmically or is, okay, this person has to pass away. We don't, we, that really is like, it's bigger than losing a job, you know? So if Pluto, at least in terms of our 3D world can be even harsher. And so you don't want to be under the, under the uh, inspection of Saturn and Pluto and be aggressively and almost lustfully pursuing something that you want because that's greed. You want to be in pursuit of something that you need because that's balance. And remember, we're still in Libra season. So we have this really counterbalance season, beautiful counterbalance between the season that we're in, which is Libra, which is the season of, it's very ironic that it's an Aries full moon in the sign of happening in the sign of the season of Libra, because Libra tells us to love each other and provide for each other and find our strength through connection with others. And Aries tells us, focus on ourselves, believe in ourselves, power through and take care of what we need. And you have this full ripe moon, this hunter moon, this blood moon, um, this Aries full moon happening in the center of Libra season. What more divine contrast could you ask for? I don't think there could be uh, a more uh, a, a more blatant demonstration of opposites colliding and cohabitating the same space for a three-day period. Another thing that's very interesting about this full moon is that it will be full the entire time the night is bright. So for the entire span of it in the sky, it's not going to be fading. It's going to be full the entire time, um, at least in terms of where, where I am on the East Coast of the US. And I think for most of the US, it's going to be like that. And maybe in some parts of Europe that most of the time when it appears in the sky, it is going to be 100% illuminated. 
you know, it's not going to be fading toward the end or fading toward the beginning. It's going to be 100% illuminated. So it will be rich and it will be full and it will be this bright beacon in the night to really point out all of those things that you need, intensify the vision, um, illuminate the truth, illuminate the obstacles, and illuminate the opportunities, and then empower you to just go for it. Go for it. It's going to be very easy to aim your arrow and target on the Aries full moon. It's going to be very easy because your emotions and your, your sense of spirituality will be, will be basically on point. <laughs> it will be heightened. Like I said, those animal eyes, those dilated eyes that become focused on the hunt. It's almost like that blood starts to pulsate through you and you're, you're running on muscle memory. Your brain isn't even getting in the way. You feel it, you smell it. it, it almost takes over your whole body and you are energized to go charge at it and get it, get what you want, succeed. Um, get what you want, excuse me, get what you need, get what you need and succeed at doing it. So let's get into the reading by Zodiac Sign. I'm going to start at the top of the chart with Aries because it is the Aries full moon. I'm going to shuffle the cards a little bit. Aries full moon. Aries full moon. Aries, this is going to be an extremely intense time for you. But an extremely fortuitous time for you. Like I said, it is going to empower even those things that maybe you couldn't see, those opportunities that you didn't realize that you had. And it's going to put some shine on those places in your life where once it was dim. Aries, Aries, Aries. I'm using my Moonology deck. So I'm going to pull one Moonology card. And I'm going to pull one Work Your Light Oracle card. And then I'm going to clarify with Tarot if need be. I felt like I just had the card out. Like it just popped out. How ironic, how ironic that for the Aries full moon, what came out was a new romantic cycle begins, new moon in Libra. A new romantic cycle begins for you, Aries. And it could begin, and that could, it could begin where something else is ending. But your love life is on center stage here, taking on a new intensity, new volume, new depth. Maybe somebody brand new coming into your life. Yep. You're going to have a lot of options, Aries. A lot of options and opportunities for love. Now, this may not be now, how do you recognize or pick out of those options and opportunities? Well, it would be with the, the, almost the quietest voice, the person that is the most sincere, the person that doesn't make you question them, the one that you see is most devoted to you. Yeah. It's pushing you toward a water sign, Aries. Pisces, Scorpio, Cancer. There's a lot of cups coming out. But this is just high intensity in terms of your emotions. Somebody who makes you feel safe, feeling what you feel and being yourself. That's how you're going to be able to distinguish if you're looking for somebody new. If you're not looking for somebody new but you're with somebody, there's going to be an intensifying of their offerings to you. There could be more gifts. 
there could be more demonstrations of love you could be um, becoming very amorous around this time as in sensuality and sexuality um, you could also if you are a couple um, be looking to be very fertile or conceiving around this period um, this is based on a long-standing wish happiness your cups are full the 12th through the 14th Aries your cups are full let's pull a work your light Oracle light and guidance for Aries on the full moon light and guidance for Aries on the full moon in Aries October 12th to the 14th I'm saying October 12th to the 14th because it will be full and it will have effect over that three-day period it's not that the full moon is going to be at its peak illumination for three days no that will happen at least in New York Eastern Standard Time on October 13th but the, the moon affects the moon definitely the full moon the new moon definitely has an effect it could actually have an effect six months out who oh Mira who or what is triggering you that's intense and interesting because what this implies with the rest of the reading is that you are interacting with a twin flame because it is a mirror and this is a person who is designed to trigger things in you that will help you uh, illuminate yourself understand yourself realize yourself and be a better version of yourself by being a mirror for them and letting them see you for who you really are and seeing them for who they really are this exchange this uh, this effect of reflective understanding between the two of you this is an implication that this is heavy twin flame energy but it's it's also an energy it doesn't mean that you're meeting a twin flame but you're definitely meeting somebody or dealing with somebody who has taught you a lot about yourself a lot about the kind of person that you want to be somebody who inspires you to be the best in yourself and comforts you so that you're not afraid to see those aspects of yourself this is also a time for self-growth self-liberation from any constraints or fears or or insecurities that you had it's not that you know it's it's basically you being able to see yourself lovingly and look at yourself honestly and not hate yourself and not judge yourself but accept yourself and therefore be able to understand what you need to work on with an open mind a non-judgmental -judge mind um, a mind that says okay this is what I need to fix and so I'm going to fix it um, but it's definitely looking lovingly at yourself and realizing yourself for all that you are Mm. I knew this was going to be good for you Aries I knew this was going to be good for you but that's some beautiful energy all right Aries we move on from Aries into Taurus Taurus the energies for Taurus the energies for Taurus on this Full moon in Aries 2019 energies for Taurus from October 12th through the 14th full moon energy in Aries for the zodiac sign of Taurus 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 Sun moon arising it's up to you Sun moon arising Taurus Taurus Sun, moon, or rising. Sun, moon, or rising. It's taking its time, Taurus. This could be relatively difficult energy for you. Okay. Two cards came out. Bring love into the situations and emotions are running high. 
I mean, these cards don't play around. This is an intensity of something popping off. This is an intensity of something taking off. This is an intensity of you're not going to be just friends anymore, Taurus. This is a, this is a sense of um, let yourself be loved. That there is a lot of amorous expression out there for you. You have to allow it. You have to allow it to happen. There is maybe a block right now, something in your life, but something in your life that makes you not want to be open, uh, not want to have your mind stay broad and let other people in. Maybe not even for romantic love. Maybe for love in general, just it's been hurting lately. It's just love hurts, so why shouldn't I shut myself down to it? But Taurus, there's so much in you that you're not going to be able to contain. And I think that unwillingly, unwittingly, you're going to end up being more open than maybe even you're ready for uh, over this full moon period in Aries. The energy and intensity might run away with you. You might be get carried away with the moon, carried away by the moonlight. So there is this sense of um, maybe some of you will be, be really... Uh, prone to or vulnerable to some sort of advances that you won't really be interested in after the mood fades. Let's put it that way. Others are really, ex there's, there's an expose of sorts, like this moon is illuminating somebody who has been interested in you or an opportunity that you've been seeking and looking for. It's illuminating the possibilities and it's exposing whatever hangups or trip ups might have gotten in your way. It's literally just like shining a bright light on them so that you can you can make choices based on now what you see in front of you. There's an illumination of the truth here for you uh, over this full moon. I see if this is about romance for you, there, this is a highly intensive romantic period for you. Romance is off the hook for you over this full moon. And that's why I say there might even be, it might even be romance in the sense of, you know, one night stands or, yeah, it's kind of a compromised victory. Be defensive and you're looking in the wrong, oh, it's almost like, yeah, your energy is that you don't really want love. You're not, you don't want love right now. You don't want love at this time. You're looking in a different direction. You were worried about different things and maybe that's the issue is that you're looking in the wrong direction because it's almost like you're working against the energies right now, Taurus. Let yourself, instead of looking away from love and trying to focus on those things that are disappointing you and causing you hardship, look at love because the energy of the universe is set up to be very favorable in terms of love. I know your, your mind isn't on it, but if you're using the energy of the universe, it absolutely will work with you to manifest an intense emotional connection with something break the chain ancestral patterns healing and rewriting the future mm. so this card in terms of these three yeah i see a lot of truth coming out um in terms of in terms of how it relates to these three cards, it is definitely about breaking away from a pattern that is not working for you. Breaking away from the decision to be closed off and, oh, I'm not looking for love right now, or that's just not my, my, my primary focus. You, even if you are in a committed relationship, your focus needs to turn to what you don't want to be focused on right now because that's where the universal energy is lying for you. It is lying in wake is lying in wait to help you and and um, be able to yeah give you the energy and give you the support in terms of these romances. I, I think the conflict that you might run into, Taurus, is that you don't want to right now. That's not what you want to do right now. It's not what you want to focus on right now. Even if you're in a long-term loving relationship, it's I'm I'm focused on work right now. It's it's I don't want to be romantic right now. But that's. The energies are very romantic right now. The energies are very emotional right now. And it will cause you a great deal of problems and quarrels if you try to push it away. Because Aries full moon, Aries doesn't like to be quarreled with. Uh, you think you can be stubborn? Stubborn? Try an Aries. You know, it doesn't, it, it's, it's like your Venus, you're ruled by Venus and they're ruled by Mars. 
it could be very, very compatible if you just succumb to that pleasurable, sexual, loving energy that wants to come through between the two of you right now. This is also an intensity in terms of if you're single, don't pick the same person, the same type of person you've always been picking. Allow yourself to try somebody who is opposite from you because Venus and Mars opposites attract and chemistry happens when you allow opposites to attract. So just take that as a bit of advice, Taurus, for this full moon. Okay. Next sign up, Gemini. All right, Gemini, this one's for you. Gemini, Gemini, how will Gemini be affected? Sun, moon, sun, moon, and rising signs. How will Gemini be affected on the Aries full moon? Energies from October 13th through the 14th of 2019. How will the zodiac sign of Gemini be affected by the Aries full moon energy? Gemini. 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 Two cards are also on the table for you, Gemini. Surrender to the divine. Wow. And hold your vision. So what did I say? Aries, Aries it rules the first house. It's the, the first house intensity. It may not rule your first house. Um, especially if Gemini is your rising sign. If it, Gemini is your rising sign, then Gemini is in your first house. Um, though, I mean, though, um, anyway, though Aries could be in your first house as well. It's a, but bottom line is this. It's going to, for you, Gemini, it's going to intensify and illuminate those aspects of who you are and what you really want in your life. It's going to infuse you or charge you with a powerful energy to get the things that you want to get or that you need to get done to pursue your dreams, to fulfill yourself. What are the things that you need to accomplish the goals that you need to stay focused on, especially during this time. It's almost like you're helping to drive this energy forward. You're moving this energy forward. How are you going to conduct it? Use your mind very wisely from October 12th through the 14th, Gemini, because your mind and in, in um, sort of um, in relationship to your mind, your words will have an intense effect on how productive you can be during this time, you are being supported is what I want to say. You are being supported in terms of your ambitions, in terms of your goals, in terms of what it is that will make you truly happy, pursuing what it is that will truly make you happy. This Aries full moon is going to give you some wonderful energy to kind of amp you up and give you all the illumination that you need to sort of lay things out very clearly for you and help you see the way and help direct you and guide you, but also, like I said, supercharge you to be able to make the journey. It, you will have what you need from October 12th to the 14th to really get all those things, your ducks in a row, and satisfy those um, requirements to be able to move forward. This is a very productive energy for you, Gemini. Whatever it is that you're looking for or you're looking to gain, wherever your focus is, wherever that sort of, if there's a hole in your life, this is the time when it, oh my God, you can't even make this shit up. The emperor just popped out. The emperor is Aries energy. And it is here for you, working on your behalf. This is also intense masculine energy. And 
you are a masculine energy, Gemini. All air signs are masculine energy. And so this, this fire energy is really meshing extremely well with your native energy and it's supercharging your progress. You see, it's very, very masculine energy to be progressive, to be ambitious, to build things, to create things. This is a time to focus all your creativity, let it out. You could be, if you're an artist, you could be in the studio for three days straight, not coming up for air because you're finding it so easy to paint and to draw and to create and to sculpt and just the, the, the energy won't stop flowing and it feels so good because there are no blocks. There are no interruptions. I feel like if you have any blocks or interruptions, honestly, this full moon is going to cast them away. Just get them out of your way. And you're just going to be free to literally be everything that you are out loud and manifest what you need to manifest, what needs to come. It's, it's deep inside of you. It's rumbling in your chest already because the energy is intensifying. This happens in two days. So it's rumbling in your chest already, Gemini, and you can feel it and it's about to literally explode and it's going to be orgasmic in how good it feels. It could be a literal orgasm. I think it's more than that because this has to do with what you're forging and creating and giving birth to in the world through your keen mind, an enormous, like infinite sense of creativity. So this is an intensely creative time for you and creatively productive time for you. This is a yes period for you. This is a you getting things done, but it's a coming through you, you're the conduit. So that's why I say painting and writing or performing, it's not necessarily others, Aries, the energy is helping you. And it's sort of others just getting the f out of your way so that you can do all that you have the power to do right now. This is like amping you up superpower. Let me pull a work your light oracle card for Gemini, October 12th through the 14th. Work your light. Work your light for Gemini. Work your light. Gemini. What is the message for Gemini? October 12th through the 13th, the Aries full moon for Gemini. I just have to be patient with the cards. Thank you for being patient with me. Maybe I'm going to put a commercial break right here as I shuffle the cards because you're not missing anything, guys. And I'll see you in a few seconds. And for those of you who didn't have to sit through a commercial, you just have to sit through me shuffling. A sign of Gemini. Interesting. Sign of Gemini. It's almost like this Aries energy is like, it's so intense. There isn't anything. It's, it's like literally the emperor is almost illuminating the sun, the moon, as bright as the sun. There's a fire in the sky for you, Gemini, during this full moon. And now a card turns over and it is share your voice. How perfect is that? It just goes right along with the reading. Share your voice. Come out of the cave. Um, persecution and expression. So this is literally you not giving a shit on the 12th through the, through the 14th. You say what you need to say out loud, despite even if people have given you shit for it beforehand. Even if you feel that people may reject you. The universe is on your side. It's such an intense period of you needing to express yourself and share your voice and your point of view being screamed out, screamed out loud and clear. Your messages cutting through all the noise, all the ruckus, all the white noise, all the background noise, all the bullshit. Your voice is going to cut right through loud and clear and people are going to see you and they're going to like be focused on you. They're going to hear you. Um, and that's why I say watch your words in particular over those couple of days because it could lead to some major fallout after this energy has left. 
So be very clever with what you say. Keep what you say focused on your true intentions. If, if what you're saying is related to your true intentions and not your, like not your ambitions or, um, it like anything that you're trying to manipulate, like none of that crap. What you want to do is focus on your true intentions, your true beliefs, your true insights, your truth. If, if what you say out loud, Gemini, during this period is focused on the truth, it will be like an explosion and there's nothing that you can't break through. People will hear you though, like in a crowd filled with background noise. You could be whispering to a friend and it'll be like you have a megaphone in front of your mouth, Gemini. That's how intensely people will be tuned into whatever you share over the 12th through the 13th. So be aware of that. That's intense energy, Gemini, intense. I know that you can handle it with the light heart that you have. I know that you can handle it. Cancer. This has been a rough couple of days, an intensely emotional couple of days for us. As Cancerians, how are the energies of the Aries full moon, October 12th through the 14th, going to affect us? Now, we already got a glimpse of it in this week ahead reading for the whole week. But around these three days in particular, what will the energy of this new moon, how will it will affect the zodiac sign of Cancer? I already feel an intensity. I already feel um, there's nothing that we can't do. There's nothing that we, we can't achieve or accomplish. Um, a superpower. Remember, Aries is, um, Aries is a, a fellow cardinal sign. So we are a cardinal sign too. We, we, are, uh, we don't move the same way as Aries, but we do have the same kind of intensity. So when we become overpowered with the energy, we absorb as the moon, as moon babies, we absorb that energy of Aries and it just can become atomic. So for the sign of cancer for October 12th through the 14th, what are the messages for this Aries full moon, the energies? for cancers. Um, and just like I thought, it's too much and it's all over the place. <laughs> Hold on. Okay. A lot. It's a lot. Cancer, it all came out all at once. A win-win outcome is forecast. Your hard work is paying off. And this is a fellow cardinal sign as well. The energy of Capricorn coming through for us. Nothing is yet set in stone. Let me review the cards and I'll go back. Let me tell you, explain. A new start is coming. It's time to take action. You are good enough. Your commitment is being tested. And isn't this what the moon illuminates? And so all of this guidance, all of this, these cheerleading cards are really there to let us know that you're being tested. The universe over these couple of days, this new, this full moon is going to challenge you like Mars does challenge. And it's going to be ruthless. So Cancerians, be ruthless back. That's what it's saying. Nothing is yet set in stone. This is the card that I wanted to really bring to your attention. There seems to be a, almost like a, a deflating mentality that comes to cancers when we, when we come up against walls or blocks. It's like we're so used to saying yes to make everybody else happy. When we come up to challenges of our own, we don't have enough energy. And so sometimes we see walls and we're just like, oh, I can't get through. I can't get through. This must be a no. This is a card that's saying whatever challenge, whatever conflict you've been coming up against, Cancerians, whatever conflict you've been coming up against is not set in stone. The decision has not been made. 
The die has not been cast, which means you still have the ability to change the outcome, influence the outcome, or decide the outcome with your actions. Your commitment is being tested. This is a test of your tenacity, Cancerian. If you have a fight, if you have a challenge, do not give up on it. Do not back down on it. I just saw this outline. It reminds me of Santa Claus. Anyway, this is your gift. This, in other words, it is going to be your decision for where you put your energy that is going to impress Mars to say, yes, Cancerian is going to break through and get what they want. The energy is set for you to be able to do it. A win-win outcome is forecast. So whoever you think is challenging you, whoever you think is going up against you, the truth is it's almost like they're just trying to fight against you right now because they don't see what you want is what they want. Okay, they don't see that. Whether this be business or love, what they don't see that what you want is also what they want. Your tenacity, your intensity is going to carve through and rip through any doubts that they have. And they're going to see that the two of you actually are co com compatible. You have compatible goals. You have compatible um, trajectory. And that working together and helping you out instead of blocking you or barricading you is actually the answer. And so it's your tenacity and the commitment to whatever you decided to do, your hard work and your commitment that is really going to ultimately decide your fate and then you're going to break through. This is an absolute breakthrough. Constantly you're being called to action. What did I say? Mars is calling you to action. This challenge is an intense call to action. It's like somebody slapping you across the face with their glove. <laughs> They want you to fight. They want you to come out of your shell. They want your pincers up. They want you raging. They want all that energy from you because it's going to require all that energy to break through that wall that's standing in front of you, turn people's opinions around, make them see things your way. It is not decided yet. The outcome has not been decided yet. But the gods are watching and it is going to be your commitment to what you believe and who you are and to what you need that is going to literally decide the fate. You're programming the energy is what this energy is saying, Cancer. You're the one that's programming the energy and this will decide what this new beginning is. Will it be the beginning you want or will it be the beginning you allowed because you didn't stick up for yourself or stick to it and stay committed? This is your support from spirit. You are worth it. You can do it. What the things that you need in your life to make you happy, the ambitions that you have, the goals that you have, they're valuable. They're worth it. You're, you're, you're being validated. You're being told you are valuable, Cancerian. This is a time to focus on you and put your energy into yourself and what you want out of life. And don't worry about who you cut in line. Okay? Don't worry about because a cancer doesn't usually cut people in line. What they end up doing is letting people cut them because they want to be nice. Fuck that nice shit. It's not, nice is different than good, Cancerians. Nice can be very unbalanced and it can unbalance those scales and do a lot of harm because you're so busy being nice, you forgot what it meant to do the right thing. And sometimes the right thing is just what seems harsh or mean or selfish to you. That's not what it is. I want you to absorb this Mars energy, absorb this Aries confidence and don't give two fucks about what other people want, keep demanding, keep insisting, keep working, and you will literally be programming the universe for the outcome that you are focused on, for the outcome that you are, that you need, for the outcome that you need. Intense energy, intense power, but with great power comes great responsibility, and that's the hard work aspect of it. It's almost like you're casting a very powerful spell 
during this full moon, Cancerian. You're casting an extremely powerful spell, but all magic has its price, which means you have to blood, sweat, and tears, and sacrifice, and focus, and, and giving up all your fears, facing your fears, casting them aside. If this, if these can be your sacrifices to the gods, and your spell will come true. Now, you don't actually be having to cast a spell. But this is, this is manifestation. It's manifestation. And you're, you're a divine manifester this week. Um, something, something, um, Canceri, this is a warning. The energy is moving too fast for you to only be halfway in. If somebody makes an offer to you over the next couple of days, Cancerian, over this Aries full moon, I, okay, this is what I see. I see you not being interested. In other words, you're not going to settle for anything that isn't the perfect version of what you want. And the energy is actually favoring that. Don't compromise is what this energy is telling me. The tarot is telling me do not compromise. Under this Aries full moon, you do not compromise anything. It is your way or no way. And that's... That. That's the energy. That's the energy. Your way or no way. And that's when you reap your rewards. That's how you, that's how you pick your fruits and, and gather your harvest. That's how you, I mean, think about it for a second. What did I just say in the beginning, Cancer? It's a hunter moon. Everything in you is designed to nurture and protect and preserve life. Mothers don't traditionally, well, that's not true. In the animal kingdom, mothers will go out to hunt if it is for their blood. You know, they will shed blood for their blood to feed their young, to feed themselves so they can take care of their young. And that's the kind of divine balance you have to recognize Cancerian, that those things that normally these socially enforced proclivities that say, well, that's mean behavior. It's not mean for a lioness to go hunt. Yes, she has to kill. I'm not telling anybody to kill for real. By the way, this is all metaphoric. I'm like, disclaimer, right? The, the, the lioness has to kill in order to pers persevere, to survive and provide. You know, it's not cruel, it is balanced, but it is intense and it is aggressive and it is harsh, but it is necessary. And you have to take on that quality of the lioness that will kill if need be, because it is need be. She needs to do it to feed herself, to sustain herself, to sustain her pride and take care of her young. And this is you, this, this weekend, I wanna say, this Aries full moon. Do what you got to do without worrying about the motherfuckers that you have to take down. That's the kind of energy, because honestly, the universe is saying it's actually bringing you back into balance to take on. That's why they're forcing you to take on that energy, because Cancerian, you've gotten way off in your very, you know, um, not passive aggressive, but um, codependent way. You've gone, you've gone too far in pleasing others so you've unbalanced those scales for you you for yourself and you've gotten yourself into a very negative and toxic environment that is not helping your dreams and so what you're going to do is just be ferocious and vicious because you need that kind of intensity to actually balance things out and make things work again so there's your permission cancer Here's your sign. Go after it like a ferocious beast over the 12th through the 14th. Do we have a light worker's card for the sign of cancer? Do we have a light worker's card for the zodiac sign of cancer? Do we have a light worker's card for the zodiac sign of cancer for this Aries full Moon, do we have a light worker's card? That's the card that was called to me. The Divine Mother. 
Anna, grandmother of Jesus, sending the light, laying foundations, divine plan. Do you see that what you do now is going to affect generations ahead of you? So don't you worry a damn bit about how ferocious you have to be. This is grandmama energy. So this isn't just nurturing one generation, it's nurturing multiple generations. So what you achieve over this full moon, what you're given the energy to achieve, it literally will affect your family for generations. It could provide for them for generations to come. So you be that ferocious beast because this is divine grandmama, not just mama, grandmama. Multiple generations will be affected by the choices that you make over these next couple of days, Cancerian. Do not take them lightly. Do not back down. Be ferocious because it is riding on this line. Ooh, wow. Just want to clear out a little bit of energy. We've gotten, I think, um, half, no. I'm going to clear out a little bit of energy. Just take a second. I may, uh, I'll insert a commercial here, guys. While I'm just clearing out the energy and getting myself calmed down. And I'll see you back in a couple of seconds. Welcome back. Let's continue. Whew. Leo. What are the energies for the Aries full moon, October 12th through the 14th, 2019 for the zodiac sign Leo? For the zodiac sign Leo. For the zodiac sign Leo. A fellow fire sign Leo fellow fire sign illuminating you and putting energy and fueling your fire and fueling your sun. What is? How, how will the energies, the message, the energies affect Leo? What are the messages for Leo? October 12th through the 14th of 2019. So beautiful. It's almost like a, a, a throwing tool, like a weapon, a boomerang. A time for healing, a balsamic moon. This is a dark moon. Leo, this is going to be this is going to be your chance to not have to work so hard and be so intense because the energy and the fuel will be coming from elsewhere. You are the light that shines in the dark. 
because the light of the moon is actually still coming from the sun. The sun is a reflector, right? Like we said in the Aries reading, a mirror. That's what the sun is. That's what the moon is to the sun. The sun, it, it reflects the light. So with this Aries, but with this Aries energy, this intensifying energy, it's almost like you're going to get a little push from the other side. It's almost like the mirror itself will start to illuminate so that you do not have to, you have time, you have, you, your energy can be for you. Your energy can be for your well-being. That's what I want to say. Um, it is a very kind energy for you, this intensity with Aries. It's almost like, like I said, it's refueling your fire so that you don't have to try so hard to burn so bright. The energy is finally coming from something outside of you. You're the sun. You usually create your own energy, radiate your own energy. It will be over, the energy over the 12th to the 14th will enable help coming in, somebody to help you, um, a momentum to help you, support for what you need, for what you, for what you need, for what you need, for the things that you need to get the things done in your life that are important to you, you will start to see that resources are coming in, support is happening for you, so you don't have to work so hard and you can actually calm down, not, not chill out, not, you're not going to give up or just lay back, but no, you're like, you don't have to worry, you can actually take some time for you this this uh, October I, why do I want to say this weekend because it's happening this weekend but it's not about the weekend it's about the full moon this energy is enabling you to be able to um not push yourself your shine will be there because it's almost like somebody else has plugged in a plug to fuel you and giving you extra juice without you even thinking about it. And you'll find that things will come to you very easily during this full moon period. They'll, they'll, they'll be offered to you. You won't have to seek them. You won't have to fight for them. You won't have to defend yourself. Things will go very, very steady. The resources will come very, very easily. Money will come in. Resources will come in. Uh, support for your ideas, people getting out of your way, blocks being removed. So where you would normally have to fight your way through life, this moon is very benevolent for you. And it's very um, beneficial for you. It's, it's, it's very giving to you. So you can actually step back a bit and just breathe. Like let that air fill your lungs. Let the peace fill your soul. Like definitely let yourself relax and unwind because you don't have to prove yourself during this period. People will just know. Beautiful, beautiful energy, Leo. <clears throat> Messages for Leo, October 12th. Yep. Yep. Divine energy, divine gift of movement and progress. And it's like, it's like, I, like I was saying, and Tarot just, just confirmed it. This is the divine coming down and giving you the energy and the resources and the momentum and the confidence this is the divine supporting you and saying, you deserve this. You are worthy. You are worth it. We recognize your worth. We herald your worth. We support it. We're going to back it. We're going to um, invest in it. This is that energy this week, Leo. To just two cards out and I can feel that that's the energy. The Ace of Wands is 100% what's going to be happening for you this week. This is something... Yeah, something that you're creating, something that you've been working on. Um, this will be good news coming through if you've been waiting for something, like a message to come through or waiting for a word. It will be revealed over the full moon that you actually, that, that this is true for you. You've actually achieved it. You've accomplished it. 
um, your, your being recognized. Um, like I said, it will come through. You won't have to fight for it. You won't have to ask for it. The It won't be that challenging. You'll actually have support. Leo, I'm pulling a Leo, Leo energy for the Aries full moon. What can Leo expect? The 13th, no, the 12th to the uh, 14th, Aries full moon. What is your guidance and advice of light? For the zodiac sign Leo. Pleiades, double mission, channeling and uplifting humanity. When What did I say that the divine is interacting on your behalf? That you will literally be their chosen one. They will step in on your behalf. Like you are a standout and a soul seed, a special child. You literally are getting these these light light working for you and through you people will be listening as if you are the divine messenger yourself like there's going to be almost a halo around your head this uh um during the aries full moon wow this has to definitely do with Your mission in life, your divine purpose in life, like what is that lifelong goal? If you have not committed yourself to it, though if you're a Leo, you probably have, but if you have not committed yourself to a lifelong goal, this is the time to start. This is the time to get started on it now. This is the energy that says whatever you put into stone this week will last forever. Leo, whatever you decide to... Um, um, work on or commit yourself to will yield great rewards uh, for those of you who have been working on your soul mission the entire time you're going to get praised you like this in other words the award the rewards are coming for your commitment to your purpose this uh during the Aries full moon. That's the energy that's illuminating all around you. It's almost, it's like almost, um, ethereal. It's, uh, it's extraterrestrial. Like it, it's, it's, it's more than just humans being on your side. As if you have served your divine purpose, you will be, you could actually be actually serving a divine purpose and spreading a message but you will have to definitely meditate and give yourself time in order to open yourself up to messages like this and then share it with the world. But you may actually be experiencing something like that in the form of getting a creative idea, knowing what topic you want to write your book about, finally finding that purpose or that drive or, fi you know, finally uh, breaking through. This, is, this has got more to do with why you were sent here on earth than what you want. It's, a, it's bigger than that. If what you have committed yourself to, if you are a Leo and what you have committed yourself to matches the vibration of what you were assigned, run for president because you're going to win. That's how intense this, that's how, um, that's how beneficial this Aries full moon energy is for you, October 12th through the 13th. Holy shit. All right. Uh, Virgo. Virgo. We're looking for the energies for the sign of Virgo for this Aries full moon, October 13th through the 14th. Virgo. 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 It's like I had to I wake the cards up. Virgo. Virgo. I'm calling you, Virgo. Are you there? What's going on? What? How will the Aries full moon affect the zodiac sign of Virgo during the hunter moon? October 12th through the 14th for Virgo, the zodiac sign of Virgo. 
zodiac sign of Virgo. Hmm. The zodiac sign of Virgo. The zodiac sign of Virgo. The zodiac sign of Virgo. Aries full moon energy for Virgo. October 12th to the 14th. Virgo. Oh, there we found you. I think Leo energy still had to clear out. Virgo. Virgo. Sun, moon, or rising sign. Virgo. It's okay. We'll wait. You're making this very challenging, Virgo. Why? It's interesting. <laughs> ah. Because you want things done your way. There's a headstrong stubbornness. There's a resistance to being this out of control and intense and nonsensical or impulsive. But it isn't really impulsive, is it? Aries energy isn't impulsive. It's very definite. And maybe you feel this week and this weekend over this full moon, Virgo, that you're being pushed in a direction that you don't want to go. You're not quite ready. If you watched the Virgo reading for this week, you'll know that there was an intense energy of Beautiful things happening to you, but you resisting them this week, this whole week, because you were not, you didn't want change. Even though wonderful things are happening, change colored them all negative to you. So it was about just making yourself push through that energy of wanting things to stay the same, even though they weren't better where they were. So this is a resistance. This I think this weekend during the full moon is when this pushback intensifies. It intensifies, but I can tell you, Virgo, it's going to win because it's actually supposed to. You're actually supposed to move on. You don't have to keep churning your wheels or working so hard or self-sacrificing you actually get good stuff coming in. And really the moon, the universe, the God, the gods, nobody's really sure why you're fighting so hard against this change. 
maybe it's just change itself that you're resisting and this emotional baggage that's in, in you that's keeping you stuck is literally what's going to explode with this Aries full moon energy and that's why you're resisting so hard you don't want to expose yourself or show people what's going on inside of you you don't you don't want people to see but this is a light in the night that's going to illuminate all those dark things so you don't have a choice Virgo your choice is only to surrender, which is not your style. But guess what? This weekend, it's not your choice. Doesn't that feel a little bit good? Because the outcome isn't your choice. You don't have to take responsibility for this. You get to let go and enjoy the intensity. And something has finally flipped over for you. Nothing is yet set in stone. So this is a fluid time for you, Virgo. This is a go with the flow card, which is not typically your energy, but it is the what is the energy that is going to get you through this. So if you need strategy and you need to feel like you're in control and make a decision, then make a decision to go with the flow, the 12th through the 14th as on this full moon in Aries. Go with the flow, just let it happen to you. Do not resist these tides, you will drown. You, do, you will not drown, however, Virgo, because you are going to be broken down enough to be swept away and then just go with the flow. Because whatever it is that you're fighting against, it doesn't have to be decided this weekend. It all doesn't, it doesn't have to be on your shoulders this weekend. The universe is saying, get over that shit. That's not what's happening this weekend. What's happening this weekend is for you to emotionally settle and understand that change has to happen and to get used to change itself and to welcome it in and go with the flow and not have to be in control and not have to make the decisions. This is one of those times when you literally spread your hands wide and allow yourself to fall back. The universe and the tides are going to catch you. They're going to carry you where you need to go. It's you having to learn to trust in the change this weekend, this full moon. That's what the challenge is. Mm. That's an intense message, shit. Virgo, message for Virgo, October 12th through the 14th. We have a card flipped. Your world is changing. Your world is changing. It is a whole new world that you'll be living in soon enough. Love it. Appreciate it. Show gratitude for it and welcome it. Welcome it with open arms because Virgo, it's a beautiful new life. It's a beautiful new world. All your self-punishment is not going to work here. It's not going to keep you from that beautiful destiny that is in front of you. So cut it out because all you're doing is self-harm. It's like cutting into your wrists. Cut that shit out because it's not getting you anywhere. Stop. Allow this change to happen because it's actually what you wanted. You did plan this. Don't you remember? You, that this is why you've been working so hard. Don't you remember? Maybe it's been so long that you forgot this was your plan. This was where you wanted to arrive. Wake up, Virgo. Let that Aries full moon illuminate those shadows, those memories that you pushed back because the work was so intense and the challenges were so intense and you were just working for work's sake and now you're not it's it's you're being rewarded you're being you're you're coming to this you're you're actually going to be able to live in the house you built so stop resisting it it was your plan you're just silly and you don't remember
message for Virgo. Boy, did you guys make me work. But you know, that's Virgo. Make you work for it, man. Make you work for it. Guidance for Virgo over the full moon. October 12th through the 13th. Guidance for Virgo. Those came out pretty quickly. Three of them. The crumbling. What are you clinging to? If these cards don't hear me, I don't know. Like, it's just, that's, it's, that's crazy. What are you clinging to? This is almost tower energy. It's being knocked down because Virgo, it's crumbling anyway. It's being torn down around you. You and yours, you're going to be safe. But this old structure of your life has got to be destroyed. Stop clinging on to it. It's only hurting because you're still standing there. Like if you would get yourself to your new place, which is all set up, you wouldn't even be experiencing all this horror. It's your choice. It's almost like you're intentionally wanting to torment yourself because you're about to be happy. Birthing a new age, birthing new creations, dreaming a new world and speak. What did I say? This is, this is all um, confirmation of what I was saying to you. This, this is a new light. This is the crumbling of the old and the starting of the new. The ending and this beautiful future ahead of you. Beautiful. Intense intensely gorgeous this could also say that you're being very you're very fertile this week virgo so you may be actually giving birth you may go into labor this week actually bringing literal new life into the world or a, a new idea could be dawning on you and you're birthing that new project or you're actually moving into a new home like i said during your reading i would like go watch the Virgo uh, week ahead reading that I just finished yesterday. Because it's all about this new life that's dawning on you. That you designed, but you're resisting. And that's why it's crumbling and, and exploding around you. Because that's the only way to wrest it from your clingy hands. Don't dim to fit in. How are you dimming your light in order to fit in? I feel like this is a message for even younger Virgos. Why are you trying to be some place that you're not supposed to be anymore? Are you like, why are you trying to be somebody else's version of what um, is acceptable? Like you, if you're not around the right people, go to the place where you are. It's that simple. Go to the place where you are. But this is like dimming your shine. Like, why are you like speaking to the higher message? Why are you not allowing yourself to be happy? Why are you not allowing this happiness in? I'm telling you now, you don't have a choice. And I think that that's the point. If you're resisting the fact that you're not controlling this, but you are controlling it. You did design it. Wake up. Wake up. Why are you trying to keep yourself from this new place? It's where you belong. Dare to be happy. And that's the challenge and the conflict and the explosion and the push that you're going to get over this Aries full moon. That's, that's the, the, the pinnacle, the climax of this challenge that we talked about in your weekly reading. It's that climax, that explosion through, through those walls. That's what's going to be happening. The Aries full moon is going to blow it all apart. You can't hide behind the walls anymore. The walls aren't even there. Get out and go to where you're supposed to be and do it now. And it's almost like the higher version of yourself telling you that. Because like I said, this is your design. You did make these choices. You did do this. So get ready because your happiness is here. Hold on. Libra. It's your season still, Libra. It's your season still. Let's not forget what messages are coming in this intense Aries full moon for the zodiac sign of Libra. 
Libra, Libra. And like I said, there's you on the bottom of the deck. This is your season. And it is a season of love. Amor. Connection, togetherness. Your Venus and then Aries is bringing the Mars to illuminate the dark and maybe intensify the passion in your nights. Libra. Let's see what's in store for you this full moon. Zodiac sign of Libra. Zodiac sign of Libra. Zodiac sign for Libra during the Aries full moon. October 12th through the 14th of 2019. Interesting. There's only one. There's only. You're the only one that this actually came out. Hmm. Um, cards came out backwards for conclusions are within reach. Full moon eclipse, but this is backwards. So, you still have a while to go. A personal issue reaches resolution. Take care of yourself. The energy is gaining momentum. I understand. So this is just starting off. Hold your vision. You, this is new. Something new has happened in your life. This is this is a new, this something new that you have desired or cared about for a long time. This Aries full moon is bringing it to life. It is. It is molding it together and alchemically creating this opportunity for you. There is, it may be something that has been denied to you for a long time. It could be a situation where you had forgotten about it or not thought about it. And maybe you were happy without it and, and you didn't realize and you don't, re, you didn't even, you weren't even thinking about, you know, um, how happy you could be with it because it has been so long since you've had it. But Libra, this Aries full moon is giving you this gift that is the four, it's like the fires that um, beautiful things are forged in. And it's, it's making you a gift and it's presenting it to you. And right now it's still a surprise, but that gift is going to be revealed um, between the 12th and the 13th of this, of this week during the Aries full moon, that Aries full moon is literally forging your gift in its fiery glow. And it is going to, it is going to deliver it to you. Maybe in the nighttime, some in a very passionate, sensual, soft, poetic way, this, this beautiful gift is going to be delivered to you. It could, I mean, let's, let's look at the cards. You are just beginning. You are just beginning. Oh my God. Libra, you are just beginning. This beautiful, this beautiful circumstance or opportunity is just kicking off. It's almost like it, people just realized you were in the room. That's what I'm, that's what I'm getting that people just realized Libra was even, had even come in the door. So if you had felt ignored, if you felt like, you know, nothing was working in your favor, if that was your feeling, that's not true at all. Yes, oh my God. How intense is this? The fool and then the world, a new beginning, and an ending. This is the this is a full cycle. So this is telling me Libra. A whole new a whole new cycle in your life is starting. A whole new you. A whole new version of who you are. Wow. Your life as you're going to know it for years to come is dawning by the light of the Aries full moon. That red intense blood moon is literally rising like the sun. Your life is going to start at night. 
it's going to start on the night of the full moon. This new being that you've become. This It could be a new relationship. It could be um, a new job. It could be that you're moving at this time. It literally is your struggles, people blocking you and holding you back, over. Over. You won. You got, essentially, a Libra, you kind of got sick of any kind of conflict or challenge and you literally just walked away from it and said, I can be happy over here too. Ha ha ha. Oh, oh you, you, you want it so bad? Take it. You have no power over me. This is just kicking off Libra. This, this is just beginning. But it's going to last for a lot, uh, much, it's going to last, it's going to last for a long time. It's literally going to be the rest of your life. This gift that is being presented to you um, during the Aries full moon Libra is going to be the rest of your life. If it's a crown, then you're going to be a queen to the day you die. If it's a baby, then you're a parent to the day you die. If it's a marriage, then this is a partnership that's going to last for the rest of your life. If it's a lover, then this is going to be turned into a, par a, a partner or a spouse, a marriage that's going to last for the rest of your life. If it's a career change, this is what you will, what you will retire from when you're 70. This, this gift that has been forged for you by that fiery moonlight is the is a, the marker the um the yeah it's like it's the the marker not the benchmark but the sigil for the rest of your life star mother how can you mother yourself look at how be i cannot this is like wishes coming true this is almost like the star card. Look at this. This is, I, there's such peace here. There's such peace. Libra, you're being given such a beautiful, beautiful gift of gorgeousness and beauty and divine approval and warmth. You are literally being celebrated by the cosmos not it's but it's less of a celebration and more of a unconditional love this is unconditional love from the cosmos coming through to ensure your happiness there is a gift that's coming to you directly from somebody who loves you unconditionally libra that will literally gift you for the rest of your life it will happen on the Aries full moon. I am feeling the actual 13th for you. This is grace. And, and this is, it's grace. That's what it is. It's grace and unconditional love. So this is divine beauty floating around you. And you have this aura. It's almost like you are wrapped in this fairy godmother glow of this is your princess, this is your Cinderella gear coming bippity boppity boo all around you. You are wrapped in this unconditional grace and beauty that will de decide what everybody thinks of you and feels about you that you walk by like a, a, a trail of pink sparkly dust wherever you go just captivating everybody. This is that divine heart gift that you're being given this week that's literally just going to affect and create the rest of your life. It is just starting. This is a new blessing that is coming to you. That's what it, that's what it is. This is a blessing that's coming to you right from the divine. And it's being forged right now alchemically through the Aries full moon and it'll be presented to you on the 13th. Look for blessings that day. 12th to the 14th, but that's more of a disclaimer. The 13th. Look for blessings that day because they're coming. 
Holy moly. These readings are intense. I gotta say, like, I, I oh, I love, I love them. I respect them. I'm in awe of them. Um, Scorpio. <sighs> Hello, Scorpios. Hello, Scorpios. I don't know if you're watching this whole video. Just I'm time stamping it so you can watch whatever you want. But this is what you can expect, Scorpio. On this Aries full moon, October 12th through the 14th, 2019 for Scorpio. If you remember in your Scorpio video for this week, and I've been saying it since the beginning of Libra season, it would be for water signs, especially Cancer and Scorpio. It would be, things would be popping off around the full moon. Romance, love, clarifications happening and being given to you around through the light of this moon, of this full moon. And Scorpio, that's what you can expect. Scorpio, guidance and predictions. What, what will Scorpio be going through? What will happen to Scorpio on the 12th through the 14th of 2019? How will the Aries full moon affect the zodiac, the zodiac sign of Scorpio, sun, moon, and rising? Balance spirituality and practicality of full moon in Pisces. God damn, that is an intense energy for you. That is an intense energy for you, Scorpio. But what this full moon is bringing is something that you actually have a big challenge with, and that is balance. That is stability. It's clarity. Colloquial terms, Scorpio, peace. This weekend, the 12th through the 14th, you should experience something that you rarely, a divine fruit, the sweetest nectar, peace. Peace is what will be flowing in your life this weekend. If it makes you uncomfortable, it's only going to last a couple of days. It's not going to be here forever. So enjoy it while it's here. It is a divine gift that's being given to you, Scorpio, peace, balance, stability if you've been seeking seeking stability wondering and and things have felt completely out of balance for you um the intensity is almost what you're attracted to in your life this weekend there will be clarity this weekend there will be resources this weekend there will be balance to your intensity with that moon that is so intense it is so fiery that Fire energy will balance out your water energy. It will balance out your emotional energy. That fire will light it on fire and almost make steam that lets you rise and be comfortable and feel warm and fly for a second. Like you will literally be able to experience by the light of this full moon a sensation that you may never have experienced before and that is complete and total unconditional happiness peace 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 is the divine gift that is being given to you by this beautiful intense aries full moon now that doesn't sound that exciting but to scorpios it's going to sound very exciting because it's it's not something that they've been given. It's something that they they're they're tormented most of their lives. It's hard for them to find balance. But there will be this clarity. There will be this understanding. There will be a certainty to your character this weekend. That's going to be so uncharacteristic, but so decadent for you. This is like the most sexy thing that you could ever experience because. You either have never experienced it before or you haven't experienced it in so long you thought it was just something other people were making up. But no, the beautiful, decadent, forbidden fruit that you get to bite into this weekend is peace. It's tranquility. It's love. It's beauty. It's rightness. It's wholeness. It's completion. It's 
the world finally making sense for a change. Like, whoa. Enjoy it. Enjoy every single second of it. I have a feeling that the way that you react to it will determine how long the energy lasts. If you allow it and you let it be, then it will stay around for quite some time. I don't know how long, but for quite some time it will stick around for you, Scorpio. Because the energy wants to be around you and it wants to be accepted by you. It's as attracted to you as everything else is this week. Seriously, not kidding. This is the thing that you encourage to stay in your life. This peace, this wholeness, this love, this unconditional love. Yep. A new start is coming. A new start is coming and it's time to take action. So with this balance, this balance, this peace comes opportunity. Something that you completely did not expect. Um, an opportunity of something that is extremely, um, a new opportunity, a new opportunity. That's, that's all I'm going to say. It's a new opportunity and this balanced place that you're coming from now. And if you have to travel, if you have to go back home, if you have to travel away from home, do it this weekend. Put yourself into the position where you are, into that place around you where you are the most happy and feel the most comfortable and content in your life. Even if it's a rock by the beach, a tree by the beach, wherever you feel happiest, let your heart be there and live there because there is a new moon and two new moons fell out and the new moon in Scorpio is coming up two weeks later. This intense energy is preparing you to walk into that new moon of yours with a hundred percent accuracy in terms of your manifestations. So it is literally prepping you for everything that you want to manifest in allowing you to find that peace and stability and calm mind and open heart and trusting connected to spirit place where you can manifest your most divine best life. This is your launch pad, Scorpio. And thank God it's balanced because an unbalanced launch pad makes rockets explode. But rockets that don't explode and they go from a healthy launch pad, they reach the stars. And that's where you're headed. Let's look for clarifiers. Any extra energy that you want, tell me for Scorpio. Scorpio, I just wanna shuffle a little bit more. Sorry. Thank you, Spirit. Scorpio, energies for Scorpio for October 12th through the 14th of 2019. Energies for Scorpio. Energies for Scorpio. Standing your ground. Taking the high road, which is interesting because you usually take the low road through Pluto, through Hades. Having faith, marriage. I honestly think you're finding your way to marriage or a total commitment, a happy state of stability and happiness. This is about finding that light in the dark. Yep, what did I say? master manifestation the, the, honestly this is actually you if you have to accepting being completely out in the cold accepting and owning being alone finding happiness and being alone getting away from any kind of turbulence or craziness this was causing it was interfering with your peace and going back and reconnecting to spirit and spirituality and faith <clears throat> and through that strong point where you've reconnected to spirit now you're manifesting everything I'm telling you, this is the prep period. This is the prep period. This is your launch pad. 
and it's coming after walking away from a very like a, confl a conflict there was this this energy of people uh like like having to fight having to fight your way through things like having dissonance coming at you like like having having people people after you like like always having to justify yourself or explain yourself or you know take the higher road so that you didn't you know so that yeah take the higher roads so that you could get around all these this craziness you're essentially like i'd rather be alone i'm leaving all this craziness behind fuck you and you're reconnecting to spirit and you're you're finding a peace by yourself after letting go of all that craziness, you're finding a peace in yourself and in your connection to spirit that's literally going to form this new foundation where you are alchemically going to manifest your whole new world. But it has to be manifested through that place of peace because this world is going to last quite some time. So it has to be manifested through that place of peace. This Aries full moon is balancing you out. Like that intense, fiery energy, which is why you guys are so attracted to Aries all the time. It's like you you want balance in your life. And that's why you constantly look for it for somebody who is very different from you. Who has a very different um, elemental constitution than you. Um, that's what you're looking for in those relationships. I'm not saying that's what you find in those relationships. Personally, there's usually way too many conflicts and you never get, you actually get lack of peace. And I almost feel like that's what was going on. It's like whatever you were trying to do to make yourself feel that, feel that, feel that peace, feel that goodness. It's like it wasn't working. There was always conflict. There was not the peace. And so basically you're just walking away from it all. And you're like, I'm just going to go back into my underworld, go back through my underworld, go back to that place where I know I belong and I'm okay in the dark. I'm fine. It's like you're shining through as the hermit. You're okay in the dark. You, you don't need much light. You can see. That's fine. And that's how you're going back to that state of completion and oneness with spirit and wholeness with spirit so that you can actually divine those things in your life that are meant for you. I'm telling you, this is a cleansing period for you, Scorpio. A launch pad. These three days from the 12th to the 14th. Any advice? Yep. Dance with life and warrior woman. Oh, this isn't the perfect energy for Scorpio. This is it. Now, warriors usually don't dance unless you've seen like those warrior, like um, the martial arts. It actually looks like a dance. So this is telling you find intensity and find, like, take your intensity and find the flow. Find a way to balance out the flow of your intensity. This is what this full moon is giving to you dance in the light of the full moon with your full intensity that full moon is going to is going to give all that energy right back it is going to no actually it's going to almost absorb energy from you so that you can actually be light and free and float a little bit normally this is your intense energy but it's like the intensity is oh I can just feel the release right now. You're still your badass self. It's not changing that about you, but it's enabling you to experience it in a way that you can actually enjoy it. Scorpio. Mm. Mm. Yeah, you're cutting through all kinds of bullshit over this full moon. And if you haven't seen something yet, if you haven't realized it yet, or you haven't had information in it yet, it's going to be illuminated by this full moon. And you're going to easily, easily, in a very, un, it's just un, almost unscorpionic way, it is going to be easy for you to cut the bullshit out of your life. Because why? And I just posted it and it's all about you. Once you get a taste of peace, you will literally, I posted it, it's on my community page, it's a meme. It says, <clears throat> it was actually Todd Bridges who posted it on his, Twitter feed, once you get a taste of peace, you will literally cut anybody out who tries to interfere with it. That you're going to get a taste of peace this week, Scorpio. And from this point on, it will change your life because you'll realize this shit is too sweet. It's the most decadent, delicious fruit I've ever tasted. And no bitch is getting in the way of it ever, ever, ever again. I'm telling you, your whole life is changing.
these readings, it, it should not surprise me how intense they are, but the intensity of them is surprising me. Sagittarius, this reading is for you and your energy and what you can expect over the full moon in um, over the full moon in Aries, October twelfth through the fourteenth, rising to full illumination on October thirteenth. What is the energy for Sagittarius? Sagittarius, this is in your sister sign of Aries. It is illuminating you and infusing you with a beautiful, benevolent energy, uh, pushing all of that Aries confidence into everything that you are, showing you in the best light that you possibly can be shown in, Sagittarius, lighting your fire to the point where it's a blazing, raging, wild beast. What is the message or energy coming for Sagittarius, October 12th to the 14th of 2019, Sagittarius, 12th to the 14th of 2019, Sagittarius, on the full moon in Aries, what is the energy for Sagittarius? What is the energy for Sagittarius? I look at things for a reason. Surrender to the divine. In other words, in other words, Sagittarius, in other words, everything that's for you is already set in stone. It's already been worked out. Let's not talk about stone. Let's talk about fire. It's already forged in fire. You could already see it playing in the flames. Whatever has, is going to be will be in other words all of this abundance i feel this intense happiness and joy and and energy it's given to you you don't have to fight for it you don't have to work for it you don't have to wonder where it is it's just going to come to you everything over the full moon is going to come to you sagittarius as if being served on a platter in a five-star hotel by a concierge it is it is it is meant for you. It is already it is already written. It's already divine. There's no work that you have to do. There's no energy. There's nothing that you have to worry about. In other words, it's coming to you in the perfect way for a Sagittarius. You know, all you have to focus on is the higher purpose and the your 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 divine purpose in this life. And I think you like to think about things like that. I think that you like to be philosophical and think about those things, but you also like to be playful and you like to have fun, which is kind of your divine purpose in life, is to bring that kind of lighter perspective to energy in general. So Sagittarius, this weekend, this full moon is going to be just illuminating your houses of destiny and it's all going to be playing out it is there for you it is it, in in some ways just like you it's already now like the future is now sagittarius that's what it is it's like right now even though it's two days away it's already there for you it's almost like you're already in that moment mm-hmm This is all good stuff, though. Like, this is you dancing in the moonlight. This is you dancing under the full moon. This is like one of those full moon parties they have in the Caribbean. You know, this is just a bunch of revelry and maybe hedonism. Sensuality and fun and playfulness and no responsibility is what the Aries full moon is saying. There's no responsibility. You, you're, everything's going to be cleaned up after you. You're cool. Like in terms of energy, I'm not, I'm not saying you don't have to make your bed, but in terms of energy, um, I feel like you already know it. You already know in some ways what's, what's going to come. Sagittarius for October 12th to the 14th, 2019. What is this? Surrender to the divine. It's going to be easy for you. It's it's going to it make literally because you are a go with the flow kind of person. 
Your hard work is paying off. I'm telling you. You've already done this. You've already done the intense part. That's already finished. In other words, what's being illuminated this weekend or by the Aries full moon is something that you've already decided upon. So what you've decided upon, something that, you, that you've decided upon that already makes you happy, it's going to grow and intensify and be really sort of about to burst at the seams with abundance for you. But you've already formed it. You've already dis you've already created it. You've already made the decision. And so everything is just leveling up to a more intense, more beautiful state of reality. So this isn't something that's going to surprise you or take you by storm. It's just going to pleasure you more. It's just going to... Um, yeah, supply you with more. It's just more. It's intensifying what you are. It's an intensity of what you already have, including your sense of self-awareness, including your sense of confidence in your convictions, including, um, including the direction that you want to go in. There's a lightening. There's a lightening this week. Of any kind of demands on you. Demands that would take pleasure out of a situation. Because you don't want to think about stuff. Well, you're not going to have to. You're just going to be able to be your full unbridled self and nobody is going to get in the way of it and everybody is going to support it and enjoy it. That's what I'm saying. This is a happy weekend for you. Go out to your favorite place for dinner. You might get free dessert. Just do you. Eight of Cups is the clarifier. So you're walking away from there has been really difficult energy. And this full moon is going to offer you a relief from that. If you have been struggling with a hardship, Sagittarius, you're moving away from it. You're walking away. You're, you're laying that down. You're like, yeah, you're not putting any more of your... You understand that... The situation is over. It's almost like there's an ending to the situation and you can move on from it now. Okay. Oh. Um, this is you. This is a very fire-like energy. But you have more almost disinterest. The death card. Scorpio. And abundance. I honestly feel like there was a situation for you, Sagittarius, that was hurting you a great deal. That you were putting a lot of energy into and nothing was coming of it. Of it, And you felt like no matter what you did, it wasn't going to be enough. And there's nothing. You were feeling a hopelessness. You're walking away from that now. You're getting a revitalization, a second chance. Maybe a second chance to be a parent, a second chance with this very maternal energy. Somebody is getting revitalized. A second chance so there's an intensity here of 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 when you lay down your struggle and you 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 throw down like like stop trying to fight things and stop trying to direct things you, you just let go then that fire energy can come through and almost purify things for you and revitalize you revitalize you revitalize your life you you have you had gotten to a point where you were numb so something really did harm you or hurt you or was worrying you and you'd almost gone numb and now your revitalization is happening. This full moon will help to refuel you and relax you and make you make you okay and heal you and also just let you be you and not have to worry about anything else. In other words, this is almost like um, 
somebody else taking, yeah, like Aries for those three days or those, that full moon period is almost going to be taking away the stress and doing the hard work for you so that you get to revitalize and refresh yourself. There is, in other words, and not worry about or think about whatever difficulty you are suffering through. You're going to get a reprieve from that over the full moon. The full moon will give you the resources and the assistance that you need to revitalize yourself, refuel. Messages for Sagittarius on the Aries full moon. Messages for Sagittarius. Messages of guidance, of light, of support for Sagittarius. The ever unfolding rose cracked open. It's happening for you, not to you. What did I say? It's like, it literally is broadening your world, breaking down walls, doing the hard lift, the heavy lifting for you. Look how beautiful this card is. And this is life. This is like the Empress energy of, of life, of dawning, of starting over, of starting fresh, of life, of life being around you when you felt it was drained from you. Pillar of light, your vibration is rising. You are the oracle. This is an intense energy of healing and happiness and abundance and just everything going your way. In other words, it's intense fortune. This full moon is going to be very fortuitous for you. You're going to be making a huge breakthrough from stress and conflict and worry. You're laying it all down. You're letting it all go. And this beautiful Aries energy is just taking care of all of it for you. Sagittarius, this is your time to breathe and relax and be happy. You just get to focus on finally getting back to yourself and relaxing again this week this weekend over this full moon this energy is literally giving you the chance to um enjoy yourself after a long period of of having a lot of pressure and worry and stress there's going to be a relief in that stress over the 12th through the 14th that's what this aries full moon is just going to like break like yeah break through and and basically come in and say sagittarius i got this covered stop worrying now and just do you and be happy and refresh yourself. I've, I've got this covered. And those three days are going to help to revitalize you, Sagittarius. Okay. Wow. Let us move on to Capricorn. Okay, Capricorn. The energy for Capricorn coming through for the Aries full moon on October 13th, but the energies between October 12th and 14th of 2019 for the zodiac sign of Capricorn, the zodiac sign of Capricorn, 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 Capricorn energy for, oh, popping out. Nothing is yet set in stone. This is a period of transition for you, Capricorn. This is a period of actually discomfort. I have to say this. It's, it's not a comfortable period for you because something that you really want to be solidified and want to be sure of, you're not sure of. There is a sense of incompletion and disconnection with something that you felt at this point should have been sort of already signed, sealed, delivered, something that you could depend on, but it, it isn't. It's got to do with something that's very emotional, something um, something that, yes, there's, there's a lot of water energy. There's a lot of emotional energy. Um, let me... Yeah, it's, hmm. there is an energy, 
it's got, I, I feel like it's most strongly it has to do with romance. Most strongly it has to do with partnership of some sort. Um, but I'm, it's, it's, there's a lot of emotion involved. So I feel like it has to do with either partnership or family that there are relationships that aren't settled or are unsettled, a little bit stormy and tumultuous. And this full moon is not going to help that intensity. It's going to almost intensify the emotions. Uh, instead of clarifying things, it might actually make things a little bit more stormy. So this is an FYI for you uh, over the Aries full moon that the, the intensity of the full moon might actually add or exacerbate an already tense or unstable situation. Let's read some tarot cards. The zodiac sign of Capricorn for the Aries full moon. What is this energy for the Aries full moon? Is the, yeah, you're stressed about something really not growing. You're stressed about the, the future and what is to come in it. You're stressed about work. You're stressed about work that you've put in that you don't see being bought to fruition. And it's almost like the stress may make you want to end things. Um, as in walk away from a situation that you think you just don't have the ability to fix. So yeah, you have being stressed about, you're, you're stressed about work. You're absolutely stressed about work. Something at what work is concerning you. Communications are breaking your heart. In other words, something that somebody is telling you or saying to you or the way that they're talking to you, the way that they're communicating um, is, is heartbreaking. It's disappointing. It's, yeah, it's, it's communications maybe coming in that break your heart over the Aries full moon because, uh, because um, emotions are so high, it just seems like somebody might be, either you or another person may be stopping or ending a situation or a relationship. What you really need to do so that things don't get to that extreme, which may not even be an appropriate ending, it's just, it may not even be a permanent ending, it's just things get really emotional and kind of break down for a second because the full moon intensifies everything, is intensifying things to the point where people can't handle their emotions. Capricorn, what you really need to do is just take a break. You need to relax, you need to take a break. The advice here is to uh, take things slow, go slow, go steady, pull, maybe even pull back a little bit and just reflect take time to cool off. This is a really good time for you to actually not have a conversation, to actually decide to not communicate and maybe keep yourself busy with other things that don't concern any relationships or situation circumstances of the heart. Whatever is stressing you out, if it's work, if it's a relationship, you need to take time take some time off of that, off from that relationship during the full moon because it seems like there's going to be you remember you're a cardinal sign just like aries and your cardinal energy is just as passionate and progressive and insistent and that's going to amp the, the full moon in aries is going to amplify that insistence and that passion and if you try to communicate the communication is going to come out too strong too definite too aggressive, too abrasive, and it could break the situation, Capricorn. So this is a really good reading for you because it's saying to you, don't say anything. Relax, let the situation blow off steam, let the full moon roll through the 12th to the 14th, maybe just, maybe just spend time with friends or spend time with, you know, people that your relationships are strained with. Or if you're having trouble at work, put work down, take a couple of days off. Don't talk to anybody about work or your boss. Like don't have those kind of communications during the full moon because you, there will be an aggressive tendency that will almost just spring out of you and pop out of you that will not be good for you and it will reflect very poorly upon you and it may actually break a situation. Like I said, I don't think the break will be permanent. But it could be because the Ten of Swords is here, which means that there's a stressful situation that's coming to an end because you just couldn't bring something to fruition. And you may get uh, you may get communication of an ending over this full moon, like um, uh, being let go from a job or a relationship ending that you had hopes for. So 
on your part, Capricorn, the best thing to do is just occupy yourself in in activities that have nothing to do with the with the situation that's stressing you out. Literally take time away and just reflect on things before you have a conversation. The the reflective, slow and steady, um, and, and just yeah yeah take a break, take a break and go slow, and do and stay away from the communications during the full moon. I want to see what the energies of light are coming through for Capricorn during the full moon. What is the advice and guidance? Align your life. What is not aligned or needs to change? So this is about the reflection. This is about the reflection and, and careful focus on what is most important in your life. There seems to be, like I remember I said, something seems disconnected. Something seems disjointed Capricorn it's the intensifying of that circumstance that feeling that uncomfortable feeling for you during this full moon and the disconnect is just going to be exacerbated so the good thing is to not try to fix it but to analyze it and to look at it and see where is it coming from why do I feel this way and then let me like maybe write things down so that I can articulate gently like you know what is going on so that when I'm ready to communicate and when all this fire dies down I can do so in a way that's respectful and progressive and make some progress and maybe you know help the situation instead of hurt the situation I'm not trying to put blame on you I'm just saying there's such an intensity to you like literally the moon is gonna like could take over your brain there's such an intensification of your emotions and you're a very emotional person Capricorn and when you're worried you worry very very deeply and it can take over you already with a lot of anxiety but this moon is going to exacerbate that oh I just got a ring in my ear it's going to exacerbate that anxiety and you and honest you you don't want that to happen you you don't you want to just relax this weekend put yourself in a relaxed state in a place where you like I said you're surrounded by friends the activities you're engaging in are frivolous activities activities that are going to be fun for you and help you relieve stress or just take this time to stay at home and relax at home this weekend you know let whatever is going to de-stress you or take anxiety away and those circumstances or situations that are causing you the anxiety stay away from them stay away from them through the full moon from the 12th to the 14th um, but analyze what's making you feel this way where those feelings of anxiety are coming from why you're hurt why you're upset what's frustrating you what's stressful and then maybe even make a to-do list of things that you can do to start solving these issues like if you're worried about your work or your job then start taking down different um, then start use this weekend to go online and do some research and and uh, see where other places you'd like to work put in some applications if you're worried about relationships and don't talk to the person I mean yes you always communicate no this week do this weekend th oh, I keep saying this week and definitely refer to your weekly zodiac vi video too I think that will help but I think but Capricorn during the full moon itself I'm sorry it, I'm sorry excuse me during the full moon itself it is very important to not because you're going to be not talk to your person your person that you're growing a relationship with or in a relationship with um, it is most important to take time off of the situation and, and 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 get your thoughts together so that they're not scattered because if it's fragmented then you're, you're almost going to be just throwing shards at people and it's going to hurt but if you take the time to piece them all back together, then you can form really round, whole thoughts that are very gently handed to somebody. And that's what you need to take time to do um, over the full moon. This is a great time for this message to come to you because it will enable you to sort of calm down situations that could have been much more intense or ended up pretty badly if you had allowed yourself to be put into situations where there was high anxiety and um, um, explosive emotions. So we're going to move on to the zodiac sign of Aquarius, Aquarius, Aquarius. Aquarius, 
Angels, what is your message for Aquarius during this Aries full moon? The energies, October. Believe in the impossible. So essentially, this is you, Aries. Make like almost preparing for winter. You're hankering down and taking a more, the advice is during this full moon, when emotions are running very intense and high, it's almost a good idea to um, be more realistic and, and look at things not in an emotional way or even an ideal way or even in a passionate way, but in a pragmatic way that you can strategize your way through the winter. Like be very, be very, in other words, be very conservative around this time. Be very um, careful with um, what you agree to get into, Aquarius. Like what you, uh, like during this full moon, I wouldn't sign any contracts. Or if I was going to sign a contract, if I had to sign a contract or take a job offer, I would read it a couple of times over. Because there is this this energy of um, it, it too good to be true, seeming too good to be true. So it's like the Aries full moon is almost going to intensify your tendency toward idealism. And those ideals can get in your way and make you fuzzy and foggy where you would re regularly have been strategic and be able to be clear minded and very practical about things. The intensity and the passion of this full moon is going to intensify that propensity in you to be an idealist and to believe in ideals and assume responsibility for getting those ideals done or manifesting those ideals. And it's, it's, it's going to compromise your integrity if you let that idealism get away with you throughout this full moon. So be aware that that's the effect that it's going to have on you so you can pay particular attention to the details, to the fine lines, to the strategy and like pragmatically working your way through whatever is presented to you through the tw on the 12th through the 14th. Whatever is presented to you, take a breather, take a step back. It may, it may sound so good you just wanna jump in it's, it's almost like it's, that's the intensity of the full moon. It's like, it's like a, a, making it sound better than it is or it too good to be true. So step back. It's okay to take your time and make, make the world kind of pause for you so that you can, you know, um, put forth that really logical sense that now normally that's what you are. That's really easy for you. The message is that the, the, the fire of the, the Aries full moon, the intensity of the Aries full moon is going to really ignite your air sign and going to keep burning it off and burning it off. There's a, a lot of ignition where normally you are cool and collected. There, it, things will be quick to burn and quick to start. And that's not a position that you're ne necessarily going to be the strongest in, Aquarius. You, you like to think about things and use your mind and sharp wit to... Um, um, apply to a circumstance so that you know and you can feel comfortable with all the issues. The passion may almost threaten to overwhelm you this weekend. So I'm just saying to you, it's not that it's, a, it's a bad offers. It's that it's not going to be as good as it looks. And so you want to take a step back and calm yourself down, calm your excitement down and remind your brain, like it, tell your, exactly. And, and Tarot is saying the same thing. <clears throat> be defensive, be defensive, especially when it comes to love situations or anything offering you a new chance, be defensive and take the high road, put yourself into a position of being in control because see this mob mentality, it's almost like you will have an unlike, like an uncommon reaction to get swept away in the mob mentality when usually you can avoid that. And you can see the bigger picture and look at the bigger picture and even con communicate with and control people through communication to like get them to like pay attention to um, the right path. In other words, com like take command of the situation. You can usually take command of the situation because you can remain so cool. There is almost a threat to that normal coolness because the heat of the, the full moon is going to be heating you up.
it's going to be it's going to be heating you up and making you a little less responsible in your judgments so be very very careful watch out make sure that you have your defenses up with any kind of offers or opportunities that are coming in just don't get caught up in the the crowd mentality you normally wouldn't you normally wouldn't, but it's this moon. It's the intensity of this moon that's going to trick out your brain and it's going to make you a lot more emotional and passionate than you normally are. And so even though you may not realize what's happening, you're not making as clear decisions. So you're just, the decisions you're making are not as clear as they normally would. So if you can avoid making any big decisions over the full moon, I would absolutely suggest that. If you can't, then make sure that you take time alone, away from the crowd, away from the hype, away from any influence, and bring yourself back down to that logical, um, clear-minded um, energy so that you can look at things um, so that you can look at things the way that you normally would. Let's see that we other um, spirit guidance, please. Oh, for Aquarius. Thank you so much. We have three cards came out. Birthing a new age. You're ready. You're already doing it. Stop over overthinking. Keep facing your true north. Birthing a new age. Birthing new creations. Dreaming a new world into being. Um, Mintaken, longing for home, belonging to original light workers. Yeah. So you're going to be, there's going to be, um, a probability, I would say that you will be put into unfamiliar circumstances around people that you normally wouldn't be around. I'm not saying that you wouldn't feel, you don't feel comfortable. I'm saying that you're, they're not your normal tribe. They're not your normal energy. And they're, they might, they might be extremely intense. Like the way that they communicate will be so different than the way that you communicate. You will, might be overwhelmed this weekend. So understand that you, it's almost like you already have what they don't, but their, their confusion and intensity will maybe infect you this week. So find a quiet space to focus away from any kind of big crowds or intense new circumstances. And if you have to face an intense new circumstance, do it in a meditative my, I know that doesn't make sense, but um, it's almost like, yeah, no, it is almost like clearing the aura space around you and make sure that you almost, if you can, put up protective barriers using your mind, using your emotions, and make sure that you're kind of spiritually protected this week. There will be, it's not a malignant mindset, it's just it's just confused mindset. There's so much congestion. There's so much sort of, um, not controversy, but you know, kerfuffle is what I would normally say. There's just so much maybe conflict around you that it could, could de deflate you a little bit. Um, I mean, get yourself out of that situation ASAP. Um, simply because it's not where you belong. It's not where you belong. And when you start to feel that feeling of overwhelmed, that you'll, you'll know very well that this is just, you know, whatever cir circumstance or situation or offer might have been made for whatever reason why you're there, there will be a sense of discomfort and intensity that doesn't feel good to you. And you really need to just walk out and leave and, and, and say, no, thank you. This isn't for me and and then go meditate and like sort of cleanse yourself and cleanse your energy this is a really good weekend for you to reconnect with spirit and just spend the time with the higher energy the higher power your ancestors um you don't have to spend it in meditation and prayer but spend it um spend it more to yourself and 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 just yeah, spend it more with yourself and just you and spirit. That's the best, most beautiful place to put your energy through this full moon. 
I'm saying all the readings, Aquarius, have been extremely intense. So yours did did <laughs> did not disappoint. <sighs> Pisces. Okay. Um, intensity turned upside down. Surrender to the divine. The energy is gaining momentum. I almost feel like these cards are implying there's going to be a resistance coming from you, Pisces. Something that you don't want to face or you don't want to listen to or you don't want to hear. A situation that's coming up that's very emotional that maybe has been happening to you for a while and you've repressed it and suppressed it. But this intensifying of emotions with the full moon, it's almost like emotions on fire. All your water is on fire and your fish are swimming almost in a whirlwind. You are going to be very pop-offish. The energy is going to be so intense that maybe you won't even be able to be responsible for what you say. There is an in, in, such an intensity that you almost disconnect from spirits. You were making headway. You were making progress. But the intensity of this full moon will almost sort of interfere with the wavelength of that. So know that, Pisces. Know that this weekend is a weekend where even though you've made progress on something, it all of a sudden feels like that progress is disconnected or interfered with. That's just the moon fucking with the energy it will subside in three days. It will subside between the 12th and the 14th. It will subside. You have, please just remain faithful. You have not lost your ground. Nothing is really wrong. It's just this almost like cosmic disconnect that's going to almost fuck with the, the radio waves so that the communications can't come through between you and the divine, you and your faith, you and the progress that you've made it's okay. It's just the intensity around you. What really would be a good thing for you to do um, during this full moon, Pisces, is for you to um, go with the flow. No expectations at all. No expectations at all. And if you've been waiting for word or message or movement, just wait a little bit while longer. Um, there is this intensity of um, um, you might want to think about reconnecting with a parent or um, I know this sounds crazy, but it's almost like call home. That's what, that's what it feels like. It's almost like, like reconnecting with a parental figure, reconnecting with, a, um, um, a grandparent reconnecting with somebody who inspires you, uh, a maternal figure. It doesn't have to be your actual mother, but reconnecting with somebody who has that nurturing mentality that a person that makes you feel nourished and like they infuse you with happiness, like they want to take care of you, to be in the presence of that person this weekend would really almost give you that solidity and that foundation you need while all of this confusing fire energy is swirling around you. So it's like find your land, find that rock that you can cling to this week and that will provide you with the stability and the um, consistency while all this, this intense emotion and interference um, is happening. In other words, don't like, don't rely on any kind of actual like texts or DMs or even phone calls. Be in the physical presence of somebody who solidifies you. And it's almost like their energy is going to be able to ground you, Pisces. And so you can sort of just like meld with their energy to get a connection and it's fine because they have an abundance of energy. They have an abundance of energy. This is the Empress and then the Nine of Pentacles. So it's like, just connect with this abundant energy. It's got plenty to spare. There's absolutely, I mean, they're not gonna find you too needy. They're gonna, they're gonna be happy that you're there. And just, just 
just be with them. Just be be in their presence. It will help you not run away and pop off on people. And it will help clarify things. Because even though like there's a lot of confusion and, and a disconnect in the direction you thought you were so sure of, this person will ground you and give you the grounding that you need to sort of solidify you through the next three days. Um, I don't see anything horrible happening. It's just that disconnect with that progress is going to do a number on um, your emotions, your the way that you see yourself, the way that you value yourself, anxiety or worry. Those things will be intensifying around the the Aries new moon intensifying and I'm sorry full moon intensifying a because the, the moon is full and as a water sign you really need to release the past or past mistakes or worries you need to send them out into the universe maybe even doing a, a grounding ceremony or a full moon ritual that allows you to cast away all those worries and those anxieties so this disconnect that you feel to the progress that you were making will actually you'll 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 be it's almost like um not training wheels but a tether while the moon is full and so fiery it's a tether this this energy of this mother figure or this uh, it could be a good friend it could be a boss whoever inspires you and makes you feel grounded and well-rounded and you can always rely on and trust being yourself around this person they feel like home to you Pisces this is the person you want to be in their physical presence this week okay any more um, messages for Pisces coming out for this full moon in Aries messages for Pisces messages for Pisces coming out for this full moon in Aries messages for Pisces coming out for this full moon in Aries Messages for Pisces coming out for this full moon in Aries. Pisces. Work your light deck. Messages for Pisces. I can feel anxiety, like as, a, as if you're rushing things. Probably because you've waited so long for something already. You feel like it should have been here a long time ago. And this full moon will only intensify intensify that emotion. And that's why I think maybe you're, you're not even being disconnected from progress. You just feel like you're not making progress because you're actually way too far ahead of yourself. Like you're rushing things and not seeing and appreciating how far you've gotten because of these intensified emotions. Um, this is Irma. Where are you being called to journey to? So in other words, this is a directional card. Maybe, and then this is what's being compromised during the full, during the full moon, is um, lo almost losing your guidance system, almost losing your GPS. But the truth is, Pisces, you haven't lost your GPS. You're on the right track. You just feel because there's so much passion and so much cardinal intensity and you're a mutable sign and it's also such aggressive and intense en energy for you and you just absorb it all. It's, it's not that it's, I'm serious. It's like, it's like somebody's interfering with the wavelengths, but it's not like you're actually on the wrong path or that you haven't been making progress. So in faith, in faith, carry through and just Keep going in the direction that you set your sights on before your radar went down. Or if you want to, and this is perfectly acceptable, ground yourself this weekend and don't make any moves. And but don't let yourself feel like a loser because you didn't do it, right? Don't let yourself feel that, Pisces. Instead, accept that this has to be a period of stability where you just sort of hunker down like a hibernating bear through the winter, just hunker down and let the intensity pass before and, and with the intensity passes, so will the fog and so will the communication breaks. And then you, your GPS will be back up and running after the three days. So no need to lose hope, no need to lose faith, Pisces, at all. Ground yourself over the full moon. It will help you a lot. Tell me that wasn't like, huge like the energy was just 
incredibly intense and it's going to take me forever to upload this video. For those of you who have watched to the end, thank you so much. I will be putting a few, few commercial breaks in because it's almost a two hour long video. You guys are going to have to get up to go get some chips and, and take a pee. Um, um, if you want to follow me on Instagram, please do follow me on Instagram. It's born underscore without underscore boundaries. Um, also, if you are interested in personal readings, please do uh, look in the description box below. If you're interested in the extended Vimeo videos, um, the videos that I was talking about, you can look on YouTube for the, the Oracle card readings and then the tarot card readings are on Vimeo. Um, and yeah, I mean, just thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for going through this journey. The energy is excessively intense. And whether it's working for you or going to cause a little problems for you, there's none of us are going to be unaffected by it. It's just too ripe and too decadent in energy. It's going to affect us all. So know that whoever you spend time with over the full moon and the full moon happens over the weekend. So it's it's a time when we're being more social. We tend to be more social. We tend to be out more. So understand that other people are affected too. And I tell this to my personal clients. They contact me. Uh, one person in particular, she's always contacting me during full moons. And I remind her, it might not be affecting you, but it is affecting others. And their crazy behavior is going to affect you. So at least be aware that the intensity and the way this moon is going to affect people this weekend is going to skew things and change things and maybe make things a little bit nutty, even if you yourself don't feel intensely um, affected by it. You're going to feel affected by it because there's so much craziness around you. So it's either... either first person or by proxy. Do you know what I'm saying? So just prepare for that as you're out and about this week. Try to ground yourself, ground your energy, or harness this energy to make the progress where you can. Thank you so much for watching this video, guys. Please do comment below. I will read through those comments, and I will see you tomorrow.